Hey guys, a lot of people have been uh, asking for some help uh, binding multiple URLs uh, with the certificate on SSRS and PBRS. So uh, it's a pretty simple process, but if you've never gone through it, it, it can be a little intimidating. Uh, so I'm gonna get started by creating a certificate. Um, I'm gonna open up MMC. Your process might be a little different, to be honest. Um, I just managed my certificates uh, within my own domain. I'm running my own uh, certificate authority. So I'm going to be able to just uh, request a certificate from the domain. I'm going to go to request a certificate. And uh, this next part will be the same no matter what certificate authority you're using, whether you're jo uh, just uh, uh, paying some money to GoDaddy or some other uh, third party for a certificate, this particular part will be the same. It involves the two most important parts of the certificate. The common name, as well as the uh, subject alternative name or DNS value. The common name, you can only have one. Um, the common name is what SSRS will automatically create a binding for. Uh, the DNS value is, or the subject alternative name value is, what the certificate will be valid for. So if you want to use the certificate for two separate host names, both host names must be uh, DNS values. In this case, uh, I'm going to go with cats pbirs02, the server short name. Um, and cats.pbirs02. Uh, cats.lab, the, the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name. So I want to use both of those with my certificate. So I'm adding both of them to the DNS uh, values. Um, now I can only add one common name. So I'm just going to add cats PBIRS02. Um, that means that SSRS or PBIRS will automatically create a binding for cats PBIRS02 but it will not automatically create a binding for cats pbirs 02catslab the PDN, and we'll have to manually set that up. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a uh, friendly name. This is uh, the name that will pop up in the dropdown in SSRS or PBIRS, so it's good to put one in, uh, but you don't have to. And I'm just going to mark the uh, private key as exportable. And I should be good to go. I click Enroll. Um, my, uh, I, I automatically generate a, cert a certificate signing uh, request to CSR. And it automatically gets signed by my domain uh, controller. And that's it now, uh, or certificate authority, I should say. And, um, and, and now we're done. We've got a certificate. It's right here. And if I check it, you can see under the details, it has the subject, catspbrs02, and it has the subject alternative name, catspbrs02 and catspbrs02.cats.lab. Okay, now that I've got the certificate, I'm gonna head over here to my report configuration manager. Um, I'm going to start by adding the certificate to web service URL first. You'll see that you just have the uh, the choice to pick the certificate. You don't get to pick the URL. That's because it's grabbing the URL automatically from the subject line that we configured earlier. I click OK.
Now I head to web portal URL. I'm going to do that here as well. And uh, just doing IPv4 is uh, good enough. At this point, uh, once this is done, I should have a working uh, HTTPS URL for the PBIRS02 uh, hostname. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on that. Now, if you click on it very quickly, you'll probably get a 503 error. Yeah. The service is, uh, the service is being restarted every time you do something like this. So just give it a second and then uh, refresh. And then it should come up. Don't uh, don't get too worried if you get a 503 right away. All right, and here we go. You can see that the connection is secure. The certificate is trusted. Uh, keep in mind that whatever uh, certificate authority you use, it should be listed as a trusted root certificate authority. Uh, otherwise, this is not going to be secure. The other thing that would make it not be secure is if uh, you're using a host name that is not in the uh, uh, one of the subject alternative name values, the DNS values. And an uh, easy way to check whenever you're having one of those errors, you can click up here and there's usually a way you can click on, uh, keep clicking things and eventually it brings up the actual certificate. Uh, and then you can get uh, to seeing uh, what the, um, Here's the subject, and then there should be, I'm sure I've scrolled past it. Here we go, the uh, subject alternative name. Uh, so if I did not have this value here, this would be an invalid certificate. I would say it's not trusted. Okay, so now I've configured my uh, certificate for one of the two host names. I just, I need one more though. So what do I need to do uh, to get that second URL working? Um, this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to do a couple of things. One of the things that uh, SSRS or PBIRS automatically did for you, it, it did two things for you. It registered the URLs uh, with NetSH and it also added it to the report server configuration file. So um, I can show you what that looks like here. So it added this URL and it added this URL. Now to add the other uh, host name, I can just copy that and then modify it like that and I want to put it in both sections all right once I make this change and I save it the URL will start to show up here in the report uh, configuration manager but that is not enough uh, if I click on this it's not gonna work right I get a 404 I it's it's connecting at least but it's giving me a 404 uh, so we need to tell the server that we're expecting, um, you know, traffic to come in on that, uh, on that address. So I'm going to open up a command prompt and, and this is going to have to be, uh, as administrator. Uh, and we'll type in netsh HTTP show URL ACL. That's going to list all the currently registered uh, uh, URL reservations. And we want to uh, note the ones that just got made automatically right here. Uh, I'm going to put them into Notepad. They were made automatically when we registered the certificate. And you'll probably notice that the port 81 is in there too somewhere. Yeah, here it is. So essentially we need to replicate this. We need to uh, 
add these reservations manually for the additional URL. So how to do that? I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit and just uh, use my own article. And you can find the uh, instructions there. Here's the command. I'm going to just turn on word wrap, make it a little neater. Uh, I'm going to grab the URL I want work to, to make work. All right, I'm going to replace this URL with that. Just like that. And I'm doing four instances. This is going to be different for SSRS. SSRS only uses two. It only uses slash reports and slash report server. PBRS uses uh, slash report, slash report server, slash WAPI, slash Power BI. You can see those here, right? So I'm going to manually replace these so that I have all four. And again, if you're using SSRS, you only have to do it with two, just reports and report server. All right. So uh, now I'm ready to go. By the way, oh, uh, this is important. Uh, this is going to be slightly different. This uh, SDDL uh, will be slightly different if you're using SSRS or PBRS. So uh, just uh, grab it from the NetSH output. Uh, you can see here that this NetSH output that I just grabbed from command prompt uh, matches perfectly with the command that I'm about to put in. So, um, you know, just make sure you're, the, the goal is to duplicate these entries, but for the other URL. So I've got my commands ready. I'm just gonna execute them all at the same time. You can see that the, the URLs are not in there yet for the .cats.lab uh, host name, but uh, I will I'm going to go ahead and paste them if I can just get it to paste. There we go, finally. And if I issue the same command as before to just list them all, I should see, yep, there they are at the bottom. I've got my uh, reservations in there. And now I'll have to restart SSRS or reporting server because see, it's it's not really working. It's now I'm getting a different error, but uh, let's go ahead and stop and start the service. We'll give it a second and uh, it's uh, prompting me uh, to log in. Now, uh, I guess the more important thing is that if I click this, you can see that the certificate is working. Now, the reason uh, I'm not going to be able to log in is because of uh, NTLM loopback protection. I would have to create a, a registry entry for back connection host names, add that URL there. Though I should be able to connect from a different server, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Just uh, suffice, uh, suffice this, it, it should be sufficient to just say that, hey, it's working. We can validate that the certificate is valid. Um, uh, yeah, there are some other issues that can occur, uh, such as the one I'm looking at right now, right? Uh, the NTLM loopback protection will uh, prevent you from logging in using NTLM if I'm local on the server and the thing I'm logging into is also local on the server. Um, if you do it from a different machine, you'll have no problem in uh, logging in. Uh, but what NTLM loopback protect, uh, protection uh, essentially dictates is if you're going to use NTLM and you're local on the box, you are only allowed to authenticate with uh, uh, to host names that are either localhost or the server short name. So that's why logging into the server short name over here works, but the FQDN does not. 
Um, it's just how NTLM loopback uh, works. Um, so if I do, uh, what's my password here? Oh, well, that's strange. Uh, did I already add an exception? I might have. That or I'm running a negotiate and not NTLM. But I think I'm running NTLM. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. There's a good chance I've added uh, back connection host names to the registry already. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, if you get that error, don't uh, don't get scared. Try logging in from a different machine. It should work. Um, if you happen to, uh, you know, do something where you perform an action, uh, specifically, let's say I go to new data source and I get an error, like something, uh, unknown error, uh, I, I forget the verbiage exactly, but a very sort of like, uh, non-specific error, um, something went wrong, I believe it, it is, um, What's what's happening is probably you removed the port 80 address and SSRS is having to uh, use that other URL to talk to itself. SSRS talks to itself quite a bit. Uh, it, normally it uses the first URL on the list. If, uh, if you force it to use the... Uh, the subsequent URL, which will be, you know, you, your HTTPS URL, there are a lot of things that can happen. If, uh, for example, you're enforcing um, uh, strong TLS, like you're blocking TLS 1.0, for example, and SSRS initiates the conversation with itself with TLS 1.0, it will block itself. Right, it it will literally stop itself from using TLS 1.0. It it will not allow the communication to go through, and uh, th that's what you'll see. Um, there are some articles on uh, my blog that talk about this in more detail. This uh, I, w I wanted this video just to be about uh, binding multiple uh, host names, um, but yeah, that should do it. Uh, if you're ever going to renew them. Um, I highly suggest that you remove them from web portal URL first and then remove them from web service URL and then add the new certificate in web service URL and then add it to web portal URL uh, in that order. Don't ever delete the certificate before you unbind it. That'll get you into problems, but uh, you can honestly just Go to um, go to that same blog that I was using throughout the video. Uh, there are lots of uh, SSL scenarios and errors that you might encounter that are covered here. So uh, good luck. Hope everything works out.